Welcome to the StockMinter.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your StockMinter, Brian Johnson. And a quick market update for you this week. Uh, obviously, we had a, um, a pretty decent move <clears throat> yesterday, but you can see that the markets are really starting to get tired. The bulls have had an incredible run up. I mean, look at the last week. I can't remember where we left off, but huge moves to the upside. Unfortunately, all of them happening on gaps. It's it's impossible to play it. You wake up in the morning, we gap up to here. We go nowhere. Uh, wander around a little bit, and you wake up one, one morning, you gap up to here. And away we go again, going nowhere. At that point, you know, we're so far up, you start questioning, what do I do? Do I get short? Do I get long? Uh, it's a... <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a head game is what it is and the markets are um, the players in the markets especially are very very good at uh, at putting people in pain and keeping them there for extended periods of time so as it would be if you got long and you held long you're in great shape uh, you're doing very very well right now if you've been trying to short this thing on the way up you're very frustrated right now <laughs> but I will tell you it really does appear like we are ready for some sort of a pullback any kind of move upwards I'm not saying don't go long but I am saying be very cautious if you go long so coming into tomorrow on the Dow for instance I like trades up and over about 12 250 12 300 if you really want to be conservative if we happen to run up and through those areas sure go long but you better be able to manage it I would be very cautious if I went to lunch and didn't have a stop in which is against the rules anyway should always have a stop in but keep that in mind as you trade into tomorrow. Anything long, don't be afraid to go long, but be cautious. Okay, You want to make sure you can manage it. Any kind of gap up in the morning, that type of movement, I'm going to be looking for a short. <laughs> it just seems like uh, the markets just can't seem to grind their way higher. They're, they're making very slow progress, but it's literally no progress when you look at it in the bigger picture. So we go back here to the beginning. We really haven't covered a whole lot of ground. So a, a pullback will not only be good for the market, it'll be healthy for the bulls. Need that pullback. Let the bears come in and race it down a little bit. I'm watching for these lower levels of about 11.9, 11.950 for ultimately the first part of the pullback. You'll want to keep those in mind uh, if and when we do pullback. <clears throat> and then we'll see what we get. Uh, overall, bigger picture, what the count is. Like I said, just not enough time in these videos to go over where the count would be in my mind. But I think basically what we get is some sort of a pullback and then a pretty healthy Christmas rush. Now how you want to count that and what you want to make that is up to you. I really don't care. All I want to, all I want to get is the direction. And I want to get the direction right. And I really do feel like we're in for a pullback. Uh, my first line of that pullback will be, right, as I said, 11.9, 11.950 on the Dow then we'll watch to see what happens at that point but we will then start a Christmas rush maybe it pulls back into here I don't know but I'm saying that if it pulls back in a while once we start that Christmas rush it should be off and running and then you want to make sure if you're not already long that you're looking to get long it, it should be a pretty hard fast furious strong move to the upside and just about the time you think it can't go any higher it's gonna go just a little bit higher and it's just going to keep doing that. So don't be too quick once you're long to rush out of it either. All right. Biggest mistake amateur traders make is that they don't stay in the trade long enough and they don't maximize their profits. Okay, you're not going to call the top, you're not going to call the bottom, and that's fine. But you want to take a pretty healthy chunk out of the middle if you can. If this was a normal run up, I'm not going to call this bottom, I'm not going to call this top, but I'd love to take out, oh, you know, 11,450 to 12,000 or 12,100. That'd be great. That's an, that's an excellent, excellent move. Big chunk out of the middle of this thing. Don't be quick to, oh, oh, we're, we're up, we're up. I got to get short, I got to get short. Don't get caught up in that because you're going to miss out on a lot of really good profits to the long side. So if and when we get this pullback and start to turn around and really race upwards, you should know it when we do it too. Make sure you're part of that. Get in, get long, start small if you want to, that's fine. But don't miss the move and stay with it. Let it run. Christmas is always a very good time of cheer for a lot of people. <laughs> you want to be a part of that. Okay, there you go. Off my soapbox. Back to the markets. Overall, here's your bigger, bigger overhead um, resistance. Right around that 12,250, 12,300. Somewhere up in here. Want to be very cautious of this. Obviously, if we can get a really nice pullback here, how cherry of an inverse head and shoulders will that set up? 
that'll look really, really, really nice. So target on that by the time we hit it will be somewhere near the highs that we had a few months back. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. I haven't figured it all out, but I'm sure you guys are intelligent people can probably do that for yourself. But the point is, if we get a pullback here, love that look. Could make for a very nice inverse head and shoulders at that point. Um, as I said, I don't know if I'm looking for anything too deep on the pullback, and that's why I'm starting with this 11,900-ish area. 11,900, 11,950, back into the 200 period moving average, I think would be a really, really fair estimate for where we're at, uh, or or um, for where it might go on just this uh, pullback before the bigger Christmas rush. First place, anyway. NASDAQ, you can see we were straight up. It broke this line now. Hmm. We get much above 2340. Then I'm looking for a move maybe back into the 2360, 2365 mark. To the short side, I'm really not interested. First of all, I do not like to short the NASDAQ. I'm not big on that. But I do like it below 2260 if and when we get down there. Maybe we can get it to fill this gap. That wouldn't be so bad. It's a pretty deep pullback. I don't know if we'll get that low. For the pullback on the NASDAQ, I'm really not expecting it to get much past about 2260, 2270, actually, by the time it's all said and done. From a daily perspective, here's your move up. Here's your maybe pullback into a mess of moving averages here. Okay? So maybe we duck below it one day and get everybody thinking, oh, oh, here we go, and then it pulls back up and we hammer out or something. I just be very careful of this area when we do the pullback. I really am much uh, much more inclined to go long the NASDAQ than I am short the NASDAQ. From a weekly perspective, look at this. Since we entered this 2200 area, right, we haven't gone anywhere. This is a year ago. We've spent an entire year. If you're a longer-term investor, uh, yeah, this sucks. You're, if you're a longer-term investor basing anything off of the NASDAQ portfolio, uh, you're, you know, you may or may not be anywhere with your with your market action. Just a whole different world. This is not grandma and grandpa's market you know we do a lot of chopping sideways much more than we ever did before you go back in time to you could go back about two years and you'll find we really haven't moved anywhere so very very difficult trading if you're a long-term investment trader your account might be going up but that might only be because you're contributing every single paycheck or every single month so you'd have to look that over and find out is my account going up because i've been you know putting money into it or because it's actually making me money uh, so keep an eye on that, by the way, at the end of the year when you guys get your um, get your notices. You want to make a special note of that <laughs> because, as I said, there's there's better ways. There's got to be different ways to make money. So you want to be <laughs> you want to be careful that you're not spinning your wheels here with your investments. Anyway, uh, moving sideways, as you can see, just chopping sideways, and where we're stuck, guys. Come on, 2050 to 2400. Bigger picture, that's exactly where we're caught. So we'll be watching for this too. As the markets rally up into Christmas, let's see what the NASDAQ does. Okay, Bigger moves back above this area. Go long, young man. That'd be a really good opportunity to get that from a longer term investment standpoint too. Here's the SPX 60 minute running itself up back above this line now. Oh, kind of getting tired. I'll tell you where I really like this. Okay, Back into the 1266 overhead area. I'm thinking maybe this is A, maybe this is B going to have a C pullback. Is that C, A, B, C, 4 before 5? I don't know. Here's the point. I really like this move back below uh, this area here. I really don't like any more major shorts until we get back above about 12, or back below, sorry, about 12.30. Feel free to play that action in between here if we continue downwards, but ugh, I'll tell you, I'm just... Be very, very cautious with that. And then once again, back above 1270, okay, not a bad place to maybe sneak into a long, but you got to be managing it. Look at this huge move up. The markets are tired. They need a rest. They need to pull back. And I'm really watching the 1230, 1235 mark. That is my area on a pullback to really watch closely as that would set up, I think, a perfect shallow pullback, but a pullback nonetheless, then maybe prepare us for another nice move upwards. So that's my first mark. 1235 is my first mark. Then it's probably downwards of 1200 after that. So is this maybe an A, B, C type correction? That's kind of what I'll be looking for over the next couple days. I think we'll know. Any gaps up? Yeah, I'm looking to short once the market opens. So unless it's some big news like QE3 or something like that, I, I don't know. I, I just really think that any kind of gap up in the market is going to bring in a little bit more selling as opposed to really heavy buying. So you want to be very cautious with your trading in that respect. Back into the 200-day moving average. See how we're stuck at this overhead line, 1265, 1270? That's why I like it up and above 1270, but you better manage it. Be very, very careful up here. Up, sideways, up, sideways, uh, 
Uh, up. Uh, they're really struggling here. Okay, We didn't keep the high base formation that I was kind of looking for once we hit this high up here. Kind of look for it to be more sideways. Like I said, maybe down and back up for a hammer candle this way or something. A little little more up than sideways for me, which is still kind of in my book. I'm just still a little bit more shorter term bearish on this market for the time being. Once again, doesn't mean I won't go long, but I'm going to be very cautious going long. Okay. What I've referred to now is I'm not big on the SPY or the SSO or TNA, TZA, you name it, whatever. Indice based stocks and those type of things. I'm not usually doing those. Right now I'm really big into my futures. That allows me to get in and out in the middle of a night and that way I'm not sitting in a bad position come morning because I couldn't do anything about it in the middle of the night. Okay, at midnight I can get out. At 3 a.m. I can get out. I love that opportunity from the future side, and that's what I do in these type of cases. When I think we're a little bit, we need to be a little bit cautious, I move to the futures in a big way. So that's where I'm at with that. I just, let me just say, be careful holding overnight. How about that? Especially if you're long. Especially if you're long. VIX daily, you can see us still wandering around. You know how I am about the VIX. If you follow me for any length of time at all, if it's above 20, yeah, shows a little bit more fear in the market. We're still above 20, hence more old fear in the market. If we can get back below this 20 area, that'll show me a lot more complacency in the market. And then, yes, I'll be looking for that to, um, to occur maybe in the Christmas rush. During Christmas, I really would expect the VIX to get back down into this area. And if it doesn't, there's extra cause for concern in my book to be quite honest from a weekly same thing been pulling back here been looking at this as a pattern type thing but i really don't care about that right now the point is we're back above 20 which means there's still fear lingering in the markets itself fas 60 minute here we go nice big fat channel okay you're looking for trades above 68 and uh, entries below 64, long and short. If you go short, look at the 62, 63 area for your first area of support. It's a good profit-taking area. If you go long, back above 68, it's anybody's call. 69, 70, I'd go about every buck after that because we are getting pretty extended here on FAS. Daily, it's the same type of thing. Looks like we might still be in a pullback. Like to see that thing come back into this area here. So keep those levels that I gave you on the last chart on your chart and see if we can't pull a couple of bucks out of this over the next couple days. FAZ is then setting up very, very nicely. Really do like it back above about 39.50 and below 37. 39.50 long, 30 to 37 short. You could even extend that to maybe above 40. But I would love to see this thing. See, once again, that whole ABC, if you guys are Elliott Wave people, this looks like a nice A, B with a C yet to come. That C could extend and it could go anywhere. Back up into these moving averages, I don't know. Certainly got the room to do that. But I would think that if we can get back up above around 40, uh, I think you'd be uh, uh, in pretty good shape to see that thing to at least 41, 42, somewhere around in there. That'd be my first area for your targets. And then back below 37, anybody's guess. Um, <laughs> it's just been in a very, very slow bleed for quite a while. We spent almost, a, um, you know, almost, what, four weeks? Now it took probably two weeks or so, kind of wandering our way downwards. Would be really nice, as I said, to see the markets rest here just a bit. Here it is on the daily, and it's the same type of thing. This is, um, uh, from a count standpoint, very difficult to kind of you know, allocate, maybe uh, still on a new move downwards, which would totally fit with the Christmas rush. So I'd love to see this thing pull back up into this area here, then roll over and give us that nice Christmas rally to the upside. FAZ kind of falls apart. That'd be great. That should make for some really, really nice FAZ buying opportunities towards the... I'd say end of December before we start to see that happen. A little too early. We're in the beginning of December, but that gives you a good place to start. Okay, that'll wrap it up for today's vid. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll obviously do my best to see if I can't do another one later on this week, but I am absolutely swamped with stuff. Uh, I've got some new stuff coming to thestockmatter.com. I'll let you know. Um, I'll let you know about those new products when I'm when I when I can. But as it is right now, don't forget, I have the mentoring course. You want to learn how to trade, learn how to trade correctly? Talk to me about my mentoring course. It's a college-level course in trading. Um, very, very important for those of you that really are serious about this and want to make it work and just can't seem to put those puzzle pieces together. The mentoring, that's that that's the final puzzle piece. We can make that work. Um, the newsletter, a buck a day, 28 bucks a month. You get me every single day, videos like this every single day. They're 15 to 20 minutes every day except for Saturday. You get those videos. 
I do all the indices, the Russells, gold, oil, stock picks during the course of a week. Um, what am I missing? My Elliott Wave counts. We'll update those on a regular basis. Anyway, there's just a whole lot of information packed into those. If you find these useful, um, please try out the newsletter. Try it. If you don't like it after months, you can quit. I don't entitle you to stick with it for a year at a time or nothing like that. Make it really simple for everyone to at least try and see what you think. Um, and then... The trading room. Of course, if you have time during the day, hop in. I do a lot of futures trading, though. So if you're a futures trader or want to learn how to be a futures trader, then uh, that's the place for you if you have time during the day. Um, uh, and outside of that, uh, I think that about covers all the products I have right now. The new ones coming down the road are going to be cool. So I'll let you know about those when I can. Otherwise, see you guys later. Have a great one. Bye.